Hey YouTubers, it's your buddy Platt, and today we're going to continue our uh, beer style uh, video series with the American Red Ale. Um, just like the American Porter, there's an Imperial wing of the beer, American Imperial Red Ale. Um, but the American Red Ale itself is kind of a catch-all category. Um, it's somewhere between lighter than the American Dark Ales. Um, more color than an American Pale Ale, but kind of gets lumped in a lot of times as far as judging stuff with the American Amber Ale. So this is kind of a catch-all, uh, loosely defined category. And uh, because of that, the numbers I'm going to give you, those are just rough guesstimates. So you, depending on the American Red Ale you buy, you might find some variance. Uh, SRM, we're looking between 10 and 17. Um, IBUs 55 to 85, those numbers tend to be more for the Imperial uh, Red Ale, but the uh, regular Red Ale are still aggressively hot and it's pretty close in IBU numbers. Uh, ABVs, uh, the American Red Ale is 4 to 7 percent. Uh, the Imperials tend between 8 and 10.6, so these beers can get kind of big. Uh, we're going to serve this beer at uh, 50 to 55. This is not something you would throw in a frosted uh, glass. Now, uh, the American Red Ale itself was kind of created by California brewers. as their take or a tweak on the uh, European and Flander Red Ales uh, from uh, Europe? Now, uh, as any good American brewer will do, they'll take plenty of American, the piney American hops and aggressively hop these beers. And that's... Uh, what they do with red ales, um, you're going to get a between you're going to get about a medium plus hoppiness in a lot of these beers, but it's balanced with plenty of malts. So these are not hop bombs in any way. So if you're if you're not into hoppy beers, don't let that scare you off of the American Red Ale. Um, some of these are bottled condition, which means the yeast is left inside, and so you'll pick up a lot of the fruity esters you get from ale yeast, and you also have some haziness in the pour, uh, but that's not all red ales, it's just some in this category. Um, these beers are going to be from dark amber, reddish brown. Uh, the color itself comes from caramelized malt. Uh, technically, brewers have the option to add some kind of caramel coloring or to tweak the uh, color, but you're probably not going to see too much of that, especially in a, a quality uh, brewery. Producing that. Uh, these beers are medium carbonated, uh, plenty of bubbles, but not effervescent in any way. Uh, they tend to be somewhat mouth coating uh, the Imperial Red Ales more so than the regular Red Ales. Uh, they're going to have a medium, medium long uh, finish. Uh, and these beers also go good with uh, mozzarella and uh, corned beef hash if you're looking for a food pairing. Like I said, Though, remember, this category is kind of varied. Uh, the particular red ale we're going to try today is uh, from a brewing hot spot of New Jersey. I say it was just tongue-in-cheek. That's a great thing about this brewing thing. Uh, microbreweries blowing up everywhere. So you can have quality beers anywhere in the country. It's not just the Northwest and Colorado. Um, so Flying Fish produces a Red Fish Indian Rail Red Ale. Uh, comes in at 7% uh, ABV, so let's give her a try. Alright. Color-wise, it's a, to me a little more brown than red, but you get a little reddish hue. Um, You can see... A little, nice little head, plenty of bubbles coming up, but not a huge head. Um, lighter khaki in color. Let's give her a nose. Oh yeah, plenty of uh, piney hops, uh, nose-wise similar to a lot of pale apples. You do pick up a little bit of malt on the nose, so you know there's plenty in there. Let's give her a try. That's nice. A little sweet punch on the front, but plenty of hot bitterness. Uh, and it's lasting a little bit, but not dominating in any way. Um, yeah, I get a little bit of a toffee, 
You uh, also do get lighter bready notes in there. Um, great hop flavor though. It's really, like I said, hitting the back of my tongue. Um, the bubbles, even even though I feel it in the mouth, it's it, it's uh, it's not thick or viscous in any way. That's a nice fall time beer. I can I can envision drinking this down a tailgating party in early October, something like that. Um, it's uh, got enough mouthfeel and alcohol. There is a noticeable alcohol on there. Not a huge amount, but just noticeable. It's got enough of that to uh, work like on a cooler day, but it's effervescent enough. And also drinkable enough, to me, it could probably pair with a lot of food, especially if you're grilling out or whatever. So, uh, Flying Fish Red Fish Indian Red Ale. A good um, take on this red ale and uh, kind of like the beer let me take one more sip well I hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below also always feel free to leave a comment in the section down below any questions concerns or answers or you can always contact me on the Twitter page well until next time bottoms up